Welcome to Hard Talk. I'm Stephen Sacker. The humanitarian crisis in northern Ethiopia is worsening as conflict continues on multiple fronts. Tigrayan rebel forces have won a string of victories over the Ethiopian military. Ethiopia's prime minister now says all of the state's military resources will be deployed to halt the rebels. My guest is Getachu Reda, spokesman for the Tigray People's Liberation Front. With the death toll rising and man-made famine taking hold, what is the end game for Tigray's rebels? Getachureda in Makele Tigre, welcome to Hard Talk. My pleasure. Let me ask you this. We see the terrible suffering uh, that millions of people are experiencing in your region as a result of, what, eight, nine months of conflict. Why is it that your side, the Tigre People's Liberation Front, appears intent on intensifying the fighting rather than ending it? Well, it's exactly the same reason why uh, we took up arms and uh, tried to liberate our people from the suffering you've, you've alluded to. In fact, uh, we uh, do not consider ourselves rebels. We are a legitimately elected government who uh, was removed from, from the capital by Abiy and his partners in crime, the Amhara Expansionist Forces, and uh, the Eritrean regime. So. These people, these partners in crime, uh, have brought all kinds of untold miseries on our people. And we did everything in our power to, to bring together all our efforts to liberate every square, square inch of Tigray territory from, from the invaders. Of course, this crisis, the humanitarian crisis you've, you've been alluding to, of course, people, our people, millions of our people are suffering. From, from this man-made crisis was, was systematically engineered and generated by, by the very people who invaded our, our territory, invaded our people. It's hugely important that we talk about the humanitarian crisis, and we'll do so in, in just a minute. But first, to talk about the military situation, I, I referred to intensification on your part, because, because in June, we know that Abiy Ahmed, the prime minister of Ethiopia, declared a, a ceasefire. The, the Ethiopian forces withdrew from the city you're in, Makele. You, you claimed a victory, and he said that his forces would stop fighting. But since then, your forces have pushed beyond Tigray's regional borders into Amhara, into Afar. You are now taking the fight beyond your own borders. Look, we have not yet liberated a uh, significant part of Tigray. The western part of Tigray is still in the hands of uh, either Eritreans or Amhara expansion forces, as well as uh, federal India forces. And the, 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 the joke that Abiy uh, did declare a unilateral ceasefire in uh, the 20th of June is, is simply a joke, because uh, it was only a, dec a decision made by Abiy once his strongest military units in Tigray were absolutely decimated our, by our forces. So we vowed then, and will continue to vow even now, that until such time that the very war apparatus, military apparatus, that wrote hav havoc in Tigray uh, ceases to operate. As long as there, is, there continues to be a threat to our people, the safety and security of our people will continue to take whatever action is necessary to make sure the guns are silenced. Because there is still has been, there has been, there continues to be a concerted effort on the part of Abiy and his partners, both Amhara expansionist forces, as well as the Eritrean forces, to, to cow us into submission, to continue to, to, to alter the kind of, to perpetrate the kind of but, suffering, the right. kind of uh, heinous crimes that they have been committing against our people. But how far, so they how have far, continued uh, their campaign. Far? 
How far are you prepared to go? The, Look, the world's media, hang on, the world's media saw just the other day that your forces seized Lalibela, the, the very famous site of, of ancient churches in Amhara region. We also see your forces in Afar region. There are tens and tens of thousands of newly displaced people because of the expansion of the territory controlled by your forces. How far are you prepared to go? There are two things here. You know, we have to make sure the safety and security of our people is, is, is secure. Uh, and to do so, we have to make sure that Abi and his forces will, will not be in a position to come back and ha haunt our people anymore. OK, Abi has continued to, 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 to maintain a chokehold on our people. He has cut off communications. He has cut off electricity. He has cut off access to humanitarian aid. And he wants us to continue what he has failed to achieve in, in, in the war front to continue through the kind of siege he has imposed on the people of Tigray. So we have made it abundantly clear that until such time that such a siege is lifted and that our people are back to normalcy, that no amount of secu the, the security threat is, is, continues to be posed against sure. our people by those Eritreans, or Ethiopians or the Amara expansionists will continue to take whatever action is necessary. So course, to be clear, Abi to be clear never, then, yeah, let, uh, let's, let's keep this as concise as we can. To be clear, you're saying that as things stand right now, you have on your side, that is the TPLF side, Tigrayan People's Liberation Front side, you have no interest in a ceasefire right now. We have made it abundantly clear that we will agree to a ceasefire, a negotiated ceasefire, as long as the conditions we have put forward are made. These conditions have nothing to do with additional infrastructural facilities on Abiy's part, no additional arrangements on the federal government's part. It's about switching on telecommunications. It's about switching on banking services. It's about switching on electricity. This, this does not require any amount of effort on Abiy's part. He switched off those services. And even people who would otherwise have acted out a living going about their normal business are not in a position to do so simply because they don't have access to the basic amenities that other people in other parts of Ethiopia I, are entitled I, I, yeah, to. Yeah, I understand. So that. I, I understand you're saying that the Ethiopian government and its allies must open up all of the uh, services, the communications, the supply routes into Tigray as a precondition for ceasefire. But, but the U.S. government, never it's mind, a, hang on, never mind the Addis government, the U.S. government is saying that another immediate, urgent precondition for a ceasefire must be you withdrawing your forces from Amhara and from Afar regions. And I want to know if you're prepared to do that. We're not prepared to do that. Uh, we're not prepared to do that while we understand where the Americans are coming from, while we understand the kind of exerted effort they have, they, the, the, the kind of concerted effort they have exerted on behalf of our people. We are very grateful to that. But we totally beg to differ when it comes to withdrawal of our forces back to Tigray because we still have to liberate every square, square inch of Tigray territory. The West is still in the control of Amhara expansionist Eritreans and the federal forces. Second, we don't have any security arrangement will, which will ensure that Abi, with his uh, declared intention to commit genocide in Tigray, will not come back and, uh, and, and uh, unleash the kind of suffering he had perfected into, art, into an art form the last nine months. I'm listening very hard to what you're saying. And when you accuse Prime Minister Abi Ahmed, whose ruling party, let us not forget, did win a a crushing majority of seats in the in the federal parliament just a couple of months ago. Uh, when you hang on, when you I accuse, I consider that a joke. Well, you say it's a joke, but when he yes. is accused okay. by people on your side of genocide, I'm wondering whether you're really saying that there can be no peace as long as Abiy Ahmed is still in power in Addis Ababa. Is that what you're saying? I, I don't care if it sticks around in Aratkilo, but what I care more about is whether he is in a position to threaten the safety and security of our people anymore. Whether he stays put in Aratkilo is, is a totally different story. It's, the Ethiopians are entitled to pick their own leader, and if they want to, 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 to maintain Abi Ahmed as their leader, even if he presides over the disintegration of the nation, that the list of my problem. Hang on, hang on, my hang on, hang on, hang on. Abi, Abi Ahmed isn't their leader. He's also your leader. You are uh, an well, Ethiopian. I, uh, I, I, respect, I respectfully disagree. He's not my leader. I didn't 
take part in the elections. And I, I would you, have you don't live you do not live in a separate community. you do not live in a separate state called Tigre. You live in Ethiopia, and Tigre is one region within in, Ethiopia. I still, I still, yes, I live in Ethiopia, but I live in a territory which we, thanks to the struggle of our people, have liberated from from the chokehold of Abiy Ahmed. Except that he wants to extend, extend his chokehold through other means because he happens to control the the switch. Uh, in Addis. But so so, like that, so said, that's your, that's your uh, agenda, is it? It's separatism. What this is really all about, no, and no, it's, it's important it's, people around the world know is this, is, is that you are seeking entire separation from Ethiopia. You no longer regard Addis Ababa and uh, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed as legitimate rulers of your country. No, I, I don't consider Abiy Ahmed as a legitimate leader, not only of Tigray, but also of Oromos or even the Amhara. So as far as we're concerned, it's separatism to the extent that there is a tendency of separatism in Tigray, it's imposed on us. It is because Abiy and his partners in crime uh, caused the kind of suffering which no one in their right mind could have, could have imagined would come from a government that considers them its own. So, you know, to the extent that there is a tendency of separatism, I don't think this was something we willfully uh, pursued. This was not something... That was part of our agenda. It is still is not part of our agenda. But we have to make sure that our people have their right to self-determination and they should have unfettered access to the full exercise of this right. Whether Abiy is considered a legitimate leader by the rest of the world is, is, is uh, of uh, uh, no relevance as far as we're concerned. When I hear you use this kind of language, I, I, I then read what uh, Abiy Ahmed said to Ethiopians just the other day. He said that he was calling up all able-bodied civilians who could serve to join the military. He said, we need to, quote, halt the destruction of the treasonous and terrorist TPLF organization and the machinations of foreign hands once and for all. So you talk of separatism. He describes you as treasonous and terrorist. There is no reason to believe that this conflict is going to get well, anything but much uh, worse. Uh, as, 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 as Stephen, by, by, I, I, you should stand to be corrected. I didn't say we are for separatism. To the extent that there is a tendency of separatism, it is imposed upon us. And I'm particularly proud of the fact that our people are fighting to the nail to make sure that their self-determination rights are fully exercised, fully protected. Whether that will result in independence is an entirely different matter. As far as we're concerned, Abiy committed genocide in the people of Tigray. He didn't do it simply because uh, he was forced into it. It was because there was a method to the madness that was visited upon Tigray. There was a method, a systematic nature of the campaign that he unleashed against the people of Tigray. He his forces committed rape, his forces committed forced disappearances, his forces committed wow. all kinds of heinous crimes. We'll get to the, the accusations of atrocities, egregious abuses of well, human I'm not rights. About accusations. I, we, I we'll we'll get to them the because, the frankly, you know, you know that they apply, they apply to your side as well as Abby's side in this conflict, and we'll talk about them in just a moment. But before we get there, let us just consider the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people, civilians, who might listen to this conversation between you and me and might be in despair because they know that the tone you are taking, just as the tone taken in Addis Ababa, suggests this conflict is going to get worse. 400,000 people, according to the UN, are already facing man-made famine because of it. We see hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people already displaced because of this conflict. And you appear to be prepared to see those numbers get much worse. It would be unfair to accuse us of uh, uh, intensifying the conflict. The conflict, the ball, is in Abiy's court. It is for Abiy to agree to the very terms we have put forward, because it doesn't require, like I said earlier, it doesn't require an additional arrangement on his part. All he, have to do, he has to do is switch off the services, OK? Once he does that, we can sit together and discuss <coughs> and negotiate on uh, you know, conditions for a negotiated ceasefire. Otherwise, he wants us to continue to maintain his chokehold on our people. He wants us to continue to bombard our people. He sends divisions after divisions simply because he has claimed that he has declared unilaterally 
a ceasefire does mean he, it was indeed a ceasefire. In fact, his, his call uh, to arms to the entire civilian population of Ethiopia is another form of calling on genocide against the people of Tigray. Well, and if I think people, peace is going people, to prevail, people, people, it let, takes let, to let, the let's, let's, we, We've discussed Abiy Ahmed, and you've used yeah. your accusations many times. Let's move on. I want to know whether the humanitarian assistance desperately needed by hundreds of thousands of people who are facing famine is actually reaching them right now. The W World Food Programme chief says that hundreds of trucks a day are needed to deliver urgent aid yes. to those people. Are trucks getting through, yes or no? They're not getting through. I know of 178 trucks that have gotten through, but it is... It is uh, the tip of the iceberg compared to the kind of um, uh, volume that is required to feed hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, Abi Ahmed's forces are obstructing the traffic. They are coming up with all kinds of ex excuses. In fact, they are using conflict that is taking place in areas where uh, there is no traffic whatsoever. And he is giving all kinds of excuses and pretexts to, to obstruct uh, food convoys. And of course, I again reiterate that it is, the ball is in Abi's court, and it is for him to relent on his chocolate and to grind, to allow even humanitarian agencies to have access to cash, right. for God's sakes. He has cut, cut off banking services, and humanitarian organizations do not have access to cash. If we're talking about the humanitarian crisis, we then have to talk about the allegations of terrible, horrifying abuses and atrocities committed against civilian populations in Tigray and the surrounding regions. Now, I know that human rights groups, independent observers, have laid accusations at the door of the Ethiopian military forces, but they have also laid serious accusations at your door too. And today I'm interviewing you, not the authorities in Addis. So how do you respond, for example, to the latest reports that your forces in the TPLF bombarded displaced civilians just days ago in Galikoma town in Afar region? And according to reports, many dozens, possibly a couple of hundred civilians, including many, many scores of children, were killed in the TPLF attack. You know, we are uh, against impunity of any sort, whether it comes from Abe or from any force whatsoever. As far as this Galicoma incident is concerned, we have made it abundantly clear that we are open for investigation, independent investigation. But to put uh, matters in perspective... Well, you, you, must, you must know. Forces, you, you, you're, you're a senior advisor to the TPLF uh, governing yes. authority. You must know whether your military forces the Tigrayan Defense Forces did bombard civilians done, and cause multiple anything. casualties. Look, let, me, let me tell you this. You know the story that the Galicomo was bombarded by our forces in absolute lie. You know how I know? Because our forces were operating there. Our commando units neutralized an Afar special unit. And it's only, only the Afar special units while retreating who destroyed a government warehouse. But the, the claim that hundreds of uh, children are killed is, uh, is, is something we take seriously, but as far as we're concerned, it is not the work or the job of our, our military forces. Well, because our military people forces might wonder how, how, how real your investigation is going to be if you've already dismissed the accusations no, no, as no, lies. No, no. I'm, call, I'm calling for, in fact, we're working with UN, UN representatives here to send a team to see for themselves what did happen see, there. See, you've had months. Well, you, mean, hang on, hang on. Let, let's go through it. You've had months and months to investigate the very serious allegations backed by important work done by Reuters news agency and others into what exactly happened in a small settlement called Maikadra, where, which is a mixed, a mixed community of Tigrayans and Amhara people. And according to multiple eyewitnesses, Tigrayan youths working alongside TPLF forces shot, stabbed and killed hundreds of Amhara civilians. You've had months to investigate that. You tell me what you, you know, found. You know, you know, Stephen, you know, we, we still are open for investigation, even in the case of Maikadra. As far as we know, uh, we're not in a position to even feel. Uh, uh, excuse me, teams you've had, you've had, for what is it? You've had eight, eight months to investigate. What have you discovered in eight we, months? We, you, you know, Stefan, I will give you a, a rudimentary idea of what was happening the last six, seven months. 
we were struggling for our lives. We, we were training our people. We were, we were cornered in many parts of the dry. And of course, we had to come back and uh, reassert ourselves. We still are open for investigation. But you know, the story about my cadre is a story of advertising. You keep saying something a thousand times over, and you end up believing it. Because we were cut off from media. We were denied of any access to communications. And every story that was churned mm. out by Abiy Ahmed ended up becoming a reality. Simple question. Are your forces using child soldiers? We're not using child soldiers because mature soldiers have never been short supply. But there are child, children who want to join the army because of the suffering that ha they have suffered, because their parents have found themselves at the, rece the receiving end of Isaias or Abiy's uh, high-handed tactics. But we, ref we refuse because we have tons of people lining up to join our ranks. We don't have to use child soldiers. So the pictures that have been shown on Ethiopian TV of, of children captured for, during conflict with TPLF forces, what, they're all fake, are they? They're fake because the uh, Abiy's forces are not in a position to even take prisoners because they are retreating towns after towns. They, they, they have already abandoned practically half of the country. Let's, and they would have you believe that they have prisoners. They don't have prisoners. How could they have prisoners? They are simply rounding up helpless children who are returning from Saudi Arabia or helpless children in many parts of Addis Ababa who are aching out a living, selling um, um, all kinds of commodities or doing all kinds of errands and then uh, parading them in, on TV as, as prisoners of war. That's an absolute lie. Let's talk about the future. Right now, as we've discussed in this interview, your forces are fighting uh, in Amhara, they're fighting in Afar, you're fighting Eritrean soldiers who are on Ethiopian territory, and of course you're fighting the Ethiopian national forces as well. You've just, as I understand it, signed some sort of military alliance deal with the rebels in Oromo. It seems that you want to fragment Ethiopia to foment fighting on many multiple fronts across Ethiopia. Is it your desire to tear apart your own country? No, it's not our desire to tear apart, apart the country. Even if we were to decide to become independent, we still want the rest of Ethiopia to be intact. I'm not saying we are fighting to become independent, but I wouldn't rule that out because the tendency on the part of the population is that probably it's not a good idea to speak around. But the point is, we are doing the most responsible thing uh, under the circumstances. The OLF, whether it is considered terrorist by Abiy or not, that, that is, that's secondary, is, is, significant, is, is, is playing a significant role in, in, in a significant part of the country. And we are also reaching out to other political organizations, political entities, who would have uh, one way or another to contribute to the uh, continuity of the Ethiopian state. I find good, your answers it, very it, it, interesting, and I, to be honest, I also find the way you the just lo lo looked rather, you know, you gave me a smile when you talked about your alliance with the new, the rebel forces in Oromo. I'm just wondering, when one leading analyst says that there is a real possibility, uh, I, I will, hang on, a real possibility of genocidal violence in Ethiopia, and it is increasing week upon week, do you agree with him? We are clearly seeing signs of uh, genocide being authored, being systematically pushed by the prime minister himself. He's, he's been referring to the people of Tigray as as, uh, as weeds to be to be to, to, to be got rid of. You know, this kinds of preoteric, vitriolic propaganda is is obviously creating tension. So of course, the writing is on the wall. So our arrangement with the OLF, for example, our arrangement with our with with other political organizations is to make sure that there is some sort of uh, responsible transitional arrangement which would uh, somehow avoid the kind of calamities uh, in Abiy's irresponsible behavior uh, would likely lead to. Well, we have to keep watching and hoping that the worst can be avoided in your country. I thank you very much, Geta Juredo Reda, for joining me from Makeli. Thank you very much indeed. My pleasure, Stephen.